So we're Team Tendulum, based on our team number and one of our obstacles, and I'm Will O'Shea. I'm Owen Chapel, And I'm Wadid Singh. Throughout this presentation, we're going to go through uh, our mission statement, some of the processes we went through planning this product, the customer needs that we gathered, and the spe specifications that we developed through the customer needs, and also an econom economic analysis of the product. So our main objective is to build a BRG, a Rube Goldberg machine that demonstrates STEM principles. Our primary market for this product is going to be middle school teachers and students. Our secondary market is going to be hobby stores and toy stores and manufacturers. As a team, we sat down and decided that the concepts that we wanted to entail in this product were the conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, and simple machines. These three principles are going to be key for any middle school students who wish to pursue a career in the STEM path. Um, each obstacle that we decided to implement into the product to teach these uh, principles was the pendulum for the conservation of momentum, the slide for conservation of energy, and the elevator for the simple machine aspect. The pendulum that we intend on using is a simple one and it will be triggered by an object hitting it. And as the object hits, it'll swing and hit the next module and it'll start the next process. Um, it'll be an elastic collision and it'll conserve momentum. For the slides, we have multiple concepts, whether it's a funnel with a tube or multiple slides. Um, with the funnel, it'll increase velocity and you can see potential energy going to kinetic. And with multiple slides, it'll do the same thing except static friction will be involved and it'll decrease velocity. For the elevator, we can either power it using a counterweight or an Arduino. This will bring the computer aspect into our BRG. Here's a copy of our Gantt chart. Uh, here the Gantt chart has a vertical <coughs> line and that vertical line is supposed to represent the today's date and it'll give us an idea of where we are with the project, with the project uh, what tasks we need to complete and how far we've come. The Gantt chart also includes uh, these red tasks which indicate the critical path, which are the tasks that must be completed for the project to be completed in a timely manner. Uh, the Gantt chart includes numerous tasks from identification of customer needs in the beginning to concept testing, concept generation, conceptual review, all the way to the presentation of the end product. This Gantt chart is supposed to try to keep us on task, keep us on schedule to get this uh, product completed in the given time that we have. Uh, if we follow this, everything should run smoothly and we should have a good product at the end of the day. Our customer needs were identified through interviews and assessments. Uh, we've noticed that students have a short attention spans and students need a clear demonstration to grasp material. Um, classroom space is also limited as interviewed by teachers and students. Um, and students only pay attention when um, the material is interesting or the demonstration is aesthetically pleasing to look at. So by that, we've developed needs that need to be met for the product. It needs to be precise and quick, meaning it needs to be easy to set up and can run multiple times. Um, it doesn't take long to set up and it's compact, meaning size needs to be a factor. We're trying to keep it at two feet by three feet. Um, and again, the product needs to be aesthetically pleasing for the student, so it keeps their attention. So here we have our QFD diagram. This can, um, contains our customer needs that were gathered from the customer and our product specifications that we came up with. <clears throat> there are a couple symbols here that indicate which way we want to go with our product specifications. An arrow down means the lower number is better, so number of pieces, the less number of pieces will be easier to set up and it'll run faster. Um, higher, max height, the higher the thing goes, it's more entertaining for the kids. Um, and then the numbers are the correlation factors, so a high number like a 5 will show a strong correlation. This is between the customer needs that a machine is quickly, needs to be quick to set up and the time to set up. So time to set up is that numerical value in seconds that it takes to set up and machine is quick to set up is what that customer put forth. Um, a low number like a 1 will show a low co co correlation um, such as runtime 
um, compared to parts are easily replaced. They do not fit together too well. Our economic analysis that we came up with uh, contains a price equation, a revenue equation, and a total cost equation. Our price equation that we came up with is 300 minus 0.5D. Um, so our first product needs to be sold at $300, and then each product after that will decrease by 50 cents. Um, our total cost equation that we came up with contains a fixed cost and a variable, variable cost. The fixed cost is the $10,000 based on salaried employees, building, electricity, and rent. And our variable cost of $75 is manufacturing cost based on materials and um, hourly employees in the factory. Here we graph total revenue versus total cost. You can see our two break-even points and our max profit point. So at 52 units, we will start making money. Before that, we will actually be losing money. And then at our max profit point, um, as 227 units, that's when we make the most money. So in conclusion, our BRG will contain three obstacles. The pendulum, the slide, and the elevator. The elevator will be Arduino or counterweight based. And then the pendulum will show the conservation of momentum through elastic collisions. The slide will take us back from potential energy to conservation of energy. Um, so our primary market is the middle school level students and teachers. They are the ones using it. It fits right into their curriculum. But our secondary market will also contain toy manufacturers such as Hasbro and Hobby Lobby because they can sell it to the general public and more people than we can actually sell to. And finally, our product will fit into the economic scenario too, which is an imperfect market. So the price will fluctuate based on supply and demand. Thank you.